I'm Curtis White, and I'm a professional cyclocross racer for Cannondale. Here comes Curtis White charging up to the front. Great start for Curtis White, leading out of that grass for the first time. He looks really solid. Curtis White, very different technique there, Brad. I'm sorry, he was really uh, kind of steady in the sand. Curtis just does the work. Like, if you're like, hey, Curtis, go do eight hours, he's like, cool. Do I do it again tomorrow? I've always been a very calculated and driven athlete. I'm really a competitor at heart. But the reason I got into cycling in the first place was the adventure. To get back in touch with the reason why I fell in love with bikes in the first place, I am going to try and ride from my new hometown of Beverly, Massachusetts to my original hometown, Duanesburg, New York. It's a 300 mile ride. We're gonna break it up into two days. We're gonna have a lot of gravel roads, lots of climbing. We're gonna hit a couple of Cannondale dealers along the way. Hopefully have a lot of fun and push my body to its limit. All right, so it's just before eight in the morning. We're here in Beverly, Massachusetts, Dane Street Beach here. We're starting our ride, heading out to Northampton. Uh, it's gonna be a long day. We're definitely looking forward to it. We already got some rain coming down on us to start. It was nice to leave on roads that I had grown very familiar on. Uh, it's my new home. I love exploring that area. But there became a point where I was back on unfamiliar territory. Uh, and I really didn't know where I was going. But uh, that was just part of the adventure. I loved going into uncharted territory, not knowing where I was going, trying new things, being uncomfortable. Throughout this journey, we were able to swing into a couple Cannondale dealers along the way. The first stop we made was into Aspet River Bicycles, where we saw Tom Stevens, who's arguably uh, the godfather of cycling in the New England area. New England has a very rich history with cycling, and you could really see that when we walked into Tom Stevens' shop. The posters on the wall, the steel frames, the old wheels, and it's wild to think about how far the bicycle has come in the last 40 years. We still have two wheels underneath us, the general frame, shape is still the same, uh, but so much of the technology has changed over the years. As a competitor, I've been involved in the bike racing community for many years, but there's so much more to the cycling community than just the racers and the races. You have commuters, explorers, social riders, people from different backgrounds, all connected by this shared love for adventure, freedom, going where they want, when they want. And when I was riding down this trail, I bumped into a rider, her name was Karen. She was riding a top stone and we bonded over our shared love for riding bikes. We chatted for about five, 10 minutes about why we ride, why we love doing it, where we're going, how much fun we're having. Um, it, it was a cool moment. All right, we just hit seven hours into the ride, 120 miles, we got 30 miles left. A little bit ago, the legs started feeling tired. Now the rest of the body's catching up. So I don't think there's nearly as much gravel for the last 30 miles here. So it should be a straight shot into Northampton. The reason why we wanted to swing into a couple bike shops was because that really is the heartbeat of this industry. It's not just a place where you go to buy a bicycle. You go to a bike shop for an experience, and then you go to Northampton Bicycle, and it's more social, more casual. There's a bar area there. You can sit, you can hang out with your friends, watch bike races, wait for your bike to be tuned up, and it's an experience. Um, it's a community. <laughs> it's going great. All right, good morning. We are here at day two of this adventure. We're at Glendale Ridge Vineyard, just outside of Northampton. We're getting things rolling. 
And uh, I mean, look at this view. It's absolutely incredible. So the first part of today's ride, we're gonna be doing part of a local event here in New England, the Jam Fun Grand Fundo. We're gonna catch up with a couple friends, have some company for along the ride. And uh, looking forward to checking out some beautiful Western Mass and into New York, those roads. There's gonna be some awesome gravel segments and uh, quite a bit more climbing today. So all good things to look forward to and uh, homeward bound, here we come. are awesome. Tell us a little bit about this route. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Grand Fundo is uh, the Jam Fund is our a nonprofit that uh, Al and my friend Makunda and I started. And uh, these are the roads that we we rip on. This is the first sector of dirt that we hit when we do the, the Fundo. So, so Powers, you've been in the sport for a while. What's your favorite Cannondale moment? I, five minutes ago, when we were tearing up, uh, <laughs> when we were tearing up that uh, that double track on this. Uh, e-bike with uh, the front suspension on it. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm jealous, I wish I had that bike. <laughs> no, but uh, I have to say, I was racing for Cannondale back in 2009-10. Um, I have great memories of beating up on our good friend, mutual friend, Tim Johnson at the USGP. Um, and going before that, truly, when I was getting into mountain biking and just starting to get riding, the old school mountain bike, the, the Cannondale Super V, uh, Man, I, I just, I literally had pictures of it on my wall. And um, Tinker Juarez, Missy Giovi, the downhill rider. Oh, old all school. These, all these iconic mountain bikers. And just that uh, that feeling of being in mountain biking in those, you know, mid to late 90s was such a, uh, I have just a lot of nostalgia, a lot of great memories of that time. And, Thanks for showing me the roads around here. It's awesome. It's beautiful, man. Have a good rest of your ride. But this is just kind of survival mode at this point. I think we, we still have four hours to go today. Or maybe five. I don't know. How does your body feel? I'm tired. How does your mind feel? <laughs> tired. Did, can we ride the highway? <laughs> yeah, let's ride the well, let's ride the busy road ride all the way back. Ride 90. Just follow behind us. No, we're gonna have some fun with this. We're gonna check out the most beautiful roads. It hurts in the moment, but you know what? We're having fun. Who are you trying to convince, me or yourself? Myself. We just crossed into New York. Welcome home, Curtis. First flight of the trip. It's all right, though. Seeing the, the New York State line, that, that was just a rush of energy. That was the rush of energy I needed because we were we were still about three hours away from home. And it, it, it's a big effort to get back all the way, but that was just, all right, let's go.
So we're 4.45 into today, 73 miles. That means we have 70 miles to go. The ride's going a lot slower than yesterday, but we have a lot, a lot more elevation. I think already we've hit close to 8,000 feet of climbing. Going through Albany, there was kind of this line of crossing the Hudson River, going through Albany. That was where my, my local club is from. I was doing all the training sessions with them at the state office campus. <laughs> Once I started getting on familiar roads and trails, and again, another rush of motivation and adrenaline, just because it's there's that familiarity. This is one of my favorite all-time climbs. Kelly Station Road, just nice, gradual, winding all the way through. You know, getting back to my roots on the roads I've been riding on for 15 years, almost 20 years at this point. Uh, doing some of my favorite climbs, my favorite gravel roads, going by Briarville Lake. When I was eight years old, I won a nice fishing contest there. Um, it's a 27 three quarter inch chain pickerel. <laughs> that one on the day. I think the last couple miles of the ride were very special. I mean, I'm coming to the end of this massive feat, but also the roads are beautiful, but you have a five minute window to get the sunset just right. The view is just unreal. Pulling into the road I grew up on, into the driveway, it was this feeling of accomplishment. And then rolling into the backyard, seeing my parents, my family, we had a bonfire going, the goats, all things that I grew up with and just absolutely loving. This is, this is who made me. This is who I am and who I've become was shaped by this. <laughs> in delirious right now. Two of the biggest days I've ever put in on the bike. I can't believe I just did that. <laughs>